Alan Costa from NIS. Hello. Hello, Ryan Clements. How are you doing? And hello, Zach. Thank Hi. You for, thank you for playing for us, even though this is the first time you've ever touched this game. My, my only question is how many batches of fish soup should I make? Uh, as many as you possibly can. Yeah, so why four. not? Well, it's too far. Yeah. Might be your only chance to do it. So. A and then it turns out that you've used vital <laughs> materials that you needed later. Um, Alan, thank you for joining us on Underground today. Uh, I get, you know, Ease has a long history. It is a rabid fan base. But for those that aren't comfortable with it, tell me why Ease 8 is so exciting. Well, in a nutshell, Ease is the uh, premier uh, Japanese action role-playing game. Mm. And I know Strong words, Especially sir. after what came out earlier this year, which <laughs> I've played and I'm aware of as well. But um, I think what makes these uh, so special is that it's in addition to its really fascinating and long history, 30 years now this year actually, um, it's just so fast-paced and quick and it just feels so good to play. Um, the movements are, are just really wonderful and as you're playing you get a real sense of uh, exhilaration being at all and playing him. There is a, a, a really a tremendous sense of speed and kind of uh, the, the controls have very tactile punchy quality to mm -hmm. them and I feel like is maintained through the series. And I will say that the soundtracks are always very lauded um, on, uh, on the internet as well. Definitely. So I think fan, fans have a lot to be excited about. And we were just talking off air that Ease 8 as with many of the games in the series, you can just play it. You don't have to worry about that eight on the title. I mean, they are all stories of Adol and his adventures. Um, exactly. And, and they, they're pretty self-contained. Exactly, and that's what makes it so great is that, um, personally, I'm, I'm kind of into RPGs for the story. Um, and so I get really interested and involved. And for people who have been there since the very beginning, you can actually trace everything. And there's, there's these really cool Easter eggs and callbacks throughout the series. That said, yeah, you don't need to have played or even seen any of these before and you can jump right in and know what's going on and enjoy yourself. Well, we've confirmed that there's a butt slam, so I already <laughs> am sold on this game. I think we're set. And you were telling us also that, um, you know, as, as Zach is demonstrating right now, mm -hmm. you can switch characters during combat. Yes. Each character uh, has a different damage type that mm -hmm. they're applying to enemies. Yes. Is that a, a pretty fundamental part of the gameplay in Lacrimosa of Donna? It is. Um, if, for example, right now he was fighting some um, crab enemies, if he were to have used Adol or Laksha, um, neither of their damage types will, would be able to pierce their carapace, so he'd be doing very, very minor damage. So changing your characters in the fly to uh, adapt to what enemies' uh, weaknesses are is, is critical to the game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's talk a little bit then about the story of Lacrimosa of Donna. As much as you can say without just blowing everything, don't, don't tell us what the ending is. I don't think I've ever actually had that happen, but now I'm thinking about it, and how funny would it be if, like, the introduction of the game, Alan's like, so anyway, let me tell you about the <laughs> ending. It is going to blow your mind. <laughs> Better be safe than sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, tell, tell, give us a little, uh, a little intro. Sure. In a nutshell, um, just to give you a little backstory to Adol himself, Adol's an adventurer, which uh, in this grand world of East, which is kind of um, modeled after Euro Europe, um, Northern Africa, the Mediterranean, that area, um, he just goes around getting into adventures, helping people, and doing a lot of cool stuff. And every game kind of follows him on a new um, adventure. Actually, the first game was, was set in, in East, which is a, a place based on like northern like, Brittany and France, mm. historically. Um, what happens is he goes there. Every place has its own problem unique to itself. He solves the problem, and he hops on a boat, and then oh, the boat inevitably your help, your help. crashes. Ooh. Sorry, I just got I got distracted. That health meter was dangerous. Well, low. let me tell you what, Ryan. It's a Ooh, great thing we have some fish soup. Fish <laughs> soup. Give me that soup. Delicious. Pescatarians, mm. raise your hands. Fish soup for everyone. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Alan. No problem. Um, Adol inevitably gets shipwrecked. He wakes up in a new location, and um, his adventure begins again, kind of. Um, that's what happens in this case, too. He's on his way somewhere. He gets... Um, the boat gets capsized, but what makes this kind of special is that he gets capsized on a what's thought to be an uninhabited island. And so whereas usually he's interacting with villagers and um, people yeah. in a place that already is kind of established in there, this time it's just him looking for um, the rest of the people that were on the boat, them building up their own village to survive, and kind of finding out the mysteries of this island. Wow, okay. Another big thing, we won't be able to see it in the demo because uh, this is limited to Adol and, and his party right now, but for the first time in series history, it's uh, what's called the dual protagonist system. So um, there's a girl named Donna, a, a young girl with blue hair, which you'll probably see in a lot of the promotional materials for the game. And um, periodically throughout the Whoa. game, <laughs> oh, Adol will... You got this. 
Adol will fall asleep, and um, those parts will shift to Dana's point of view. And ah. then um, we get to kind of see things from her perspective. In the end, which I won't spoil, <laughs> um, in the end, it turns out there's a lot going on. Dana's, her, her, what's going on with her is incredibly interesting. And um, it's a pretty grand epic tale. So, so what you're telling me in this great summary, and thank you for that, is that I mispronounced the name of the game, and it's Lacrimosa of Dana, not Donna. Here's the thing. So... Here's the thing. Technically, the thing. technically, if you want to say it, the Japanese would be Dana. Um, uh, okay. Being, you know, an American English speaker, I think I naturally want to default to Dana. Okay. I don't think anyone on, you know, either side of the ocean is gonna gonna punch you for saying okay. it either way, but. Because I have an aunt Dana. Okay. Different person, right? Than this blue-haired dream lady, <laughs> but still a person with the name Dana. Right. And a big fan. And yeah, and she's just the biggest fan of the E series. <laughs> Hardcore has Adel and Blazin tattooed across <laughs> her stomach. Yeah, she has it all. You would not believe this lady. <laughs> None of that is true. But um, you, Zach, I'm impressed. You're surviving really uh, eloquently so far. I'm I, really well. I'm having a great time here, guys. Um, I I feel like I'm doing or I'm not doing some things that I should be. Alan, can you? Yes, actually. Uh, so let's talk about combat a little bit. As you yeah, can do see, it. really fast paced. Um, really visceral. One thing you're going to want to start doing is as the enemies are attacking, you're going to press uh, R1. Okay. And that will allow you to, um, it's called a flash guard. And if you do it, if you time it appropriately, that'll give you some bonuses to your attack and it kind of put them off uh, the enemy. So kind of like a parry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I, I've been leveling up here. Should I be applying my. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and go into the menu? Okay. Is that. And then, yes, that. Oh, okay. Go back and then uh, use the. L1, R1. Okay. Actually, no, I lied to you. I'm no? so sorry. Go back. It's okay. So are you guys like, just want to drink a lot of fish soup? There we so go. There we go. Skill. There we go. Oh, there it is. So um, what you can do is you can assign different skills to the uh, to different button combinations. So X circle, square triangle. And if you're holding the D-pad in that direction, you'll be able to use unleash that skill. Ah, okay. Got mm -hmm. it. So you, you're allowed to set uh, four, four different skills. You can actually set the same skill on two ones if for whatever reason you wanted to. Okay. The skills do level up. As you can see where it says next, mm -hmm. that's actually uses. So if you use, for example, high wave 213 times, it'll level up and its power and uh, its efficacy will increase. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, right. And so this is with the, um, the R1 attack that you were talking about. Yes. Got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I apologize. It's actually hold. R1 Hold down, R1 and then you'll and hit, then for example, X will do Sonic Slide, got it. Square will do Aerial Spin. I think you got a new skill because you leveled up. Try to put one in the Oh, game. yeah, there we go. We got Rising Slash. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you do. And Grand Anchor. I like the sound of that. Not just a normal anchor. <laughs> the grand grand. The grandest anchor. of anchors. We're starting you off with Grand here. And then, I did I get a new anchor for, uh, no? Maybe not. Okay. Their weapons actually, um, they're, they're set, and then throughout the game, you'll use the Blacksmith and you'll them. Awesome. Got it. Okay. Will, uh, I don't know if you're allowed Whoa. to answer that. Whoa. Here we go. Zach, goodness. I oh always boy. look away at the worst time. Oh, boy. <laughs> so. Oh, no. There it is. There oh. it is. So that kind of right. slowed down time a little bit for the enemy, and that's how you're going to take advantage of, uh, of their weaknesses. How about that? There you go. High level play here. High level play. Can we get some of that grand anchor action? Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Ooh. There it is. Uh -oh. Okay. You just broke him. When yeah. an enemy's broken, uh -huh. that means you're hitting their weak point uh, enough times. What happens is that oh. they're, a, they're in a weakened state, and your attacks will do more damage. Okay. So I shouldn't have just, like, stopped attacking, you're saying. What <laughs> you should do is maybe heal. Okay. What do we do in this well, situation, Alan? Hmm. Are we done? Is, is Great that I, would, I would go with the heal potion, because you don't want to use your party heals, because everybody else is fine. Okay. But... Um, can I drink it if I have, <laughs> if you have gone zero. to zero <laughs> HP? I, I think you have a couple of, uh, there you go, revived heal, the great tree drop. Okay. There we go. Thank, there look, we go. thank goodness for trees, right? Without those tree drops, uh, our big anchor man right. would not be anchor man, did it? Oh, anchor, that's right. Yeah. That's now, I, I don't know if San you're Diego, allowed. So <laughs> that, I don't know if you were allowed to answer this question. Will we see more than just these three characters, or are these the oh, no, we will. that we Oh, okay. we definitely will. This is, um, I should probably mention like that this playable, is... Like uh, playable, though. Yes, yes. Ah. This is kind of a, I don't know what you want to call it, a, a slice of the game. This What you're playing right now actually happens in the game. They just uh, advanced us to a, a point where we could hop in with the party and experience mm -hmm. it and play one of the bosses, and then it's over. But yeah, there's um there's more playable characters in the game. Okay, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. Although I just want to, for the record, I would have been totally happy with just the three on screen. 
I just want you to know that. <laughs> oh no, what happened to his leg? His foot. Uh, Zach, I, if you could just do the dramatic reading, please, for this. Um, you know, I'm really trying to focus on my my play right <laughs> now. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to mess this part up. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the uh, it's one of the key parts. A lot of yeah Shoot. high uh, <laughs> <laughs> high action right now. Oh. High dexterity required. Well, allow me. Ah, oh, who are you guys? Where did you come from? We really should have hired you. <laughs> Oh, I actually do want to mention, because this has been something... <laughs> for for <exactly>. Something. <laughs> You're like, how do I get something. this guy off of voice acting as fast as possible? And this is actually going to sound worse than I mean it to, coming okay. off that. Okay, But good. we did leave the Japanese voices in the game, <laughs> <laughs> so... Fans can enjoy either. Either uh, the original voice track or uh, right. Clemens' right. wonderful, wonderful yeah. voice Yeah, no, voice. that's great. Thanks. <laughs> And, uh, oh Zach. boy, oh. this seems like uh, potentially a good uh, stopping point or a good victorious point. <laughs> yes. So we will see. This is the merciless shivering vase. Wow. I'm really curious to see how you're going to say that. Yeah. I was like, did you say vase or vase? Should I have said vase? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's right. What about vase? <laughs> I think that one's not right. That's that might not be accurate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm noticing, kind of combat-wise, it seems like this area certainly seems to favor the anchor play overall, like just general enemy types. Yeah, and then for this boss in particular, you might want to switch out to either Adder or Lachim. Very nice. Oh, really? And um, they might they might be doing decent damage. Be Adder, be Adder. Yeah, there's my man. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's doing okay. I think he gets a little bit of a hit because he's got kind of armored, but right. he's still okay. Zack just goes straight for the butt. <laughs> Always. Right. Yeah, anytime there's a boss, you just oh. you just hightailed around back. You just go nuts. <laughs> if there's not a glowing red point, that's my right. default. Right. Look for the weak point. If there is no weak point, just hit him in the butt. <laughs> oh. Hit him in the giant turtle butt. Okay, you got this. You're more than halfway. If you look at the bottom left. Oh yeah, there Zach, you go. Zach, you got this, man. This uh, this giant uh, uh -oh. this giant uh -oh. base uh -oh. stands oh. no oh. chance, or has now two thirds of a chance. <laughs> well, let's see here. When the going gets tough, you can heal. The tough enough. gets going. You know that feels anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, speaking about, there is a uh, a boss rush mode in the game, which is kind of a serious staple. After you, uh, you beat it, you're able to uh, do a boss rush mode. Yeah. Oh, cool. Some people are really into it. They'll, they'll pump up a difficulty to Inferno and just go through. All those guys. speed runners just, just jonesing oh, for yeah. the next the next big challenge. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Zach, just take it easy I'm now. Good. All right. I mean, you, you've got this. You, No one is doubting you right now. This is pretty oh much boy. in the bag. Alan, final parting thoughts before uh, Zach emerges from this battle, hopefully victorious. Well, I think for someone who's not played before, you're doing a fantastic oh, job. Oh, thank you very much. I hope that, I mean, it speaks to the testament of your skill as a player, but hopefully the uh, ease of playability of the game. Everybody, please look forward to it. We're super excited to bring it to you this September. Well, thank you, Alan. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you being here to talk about Ease 8, classic uh, JRPG series, uh, finding more life on PS4. Congratulations, yes. Zach. I, uh, okay. Oh. I hope